I hope you like the nautical themed backdrop, especially for the blue Marvin, nice and blue and sort of seasidey. This is an excerpt from a tutorial video that's available from a Patreon page on how to program almost any synths over six or seven hours worth of videos there, showing sort of module by module, example on synths and tutorials, etc. But um, I've just not seen anything on the voltage processor um, really in depth or as in depth as I'd, li as I'd like. So I thought I'd put this on YouTube as well because it might be useful for other people. And if you are interested in doing this, please come over to my Patreon page and join me over there where I've got lots more stuff like this. And this is probably the hardest bit on this whole synth to get your head around because it's really, I think it's different than any other module in any other synth you've probably come across. So this can be broken down into four main sections really and I'll take a look at each of them in turn. First one being the mult, second one being an inverter. We invert any signal coming into any of these inputs. Thirdly, it's a CV controller. We can control CVs with these sliders. And finally, it's a CV and an audio mixer, again, using the sliders. So let's start off with the mult. The mult's used for taking a single signal and splitting into two directions or mixing signals. I'll show you what I mean. So you have ins and outs. They all act as an in or an out. So anything that comes into this is blended with everything else. So let's take the LFO and we'll modulate PWM on VCO2 and VCO3. So VCO2. Oh, let's take this off. and PWM on three as well. And then maybe let's put that in as a pulse, shall we? So there we go, one signal split into two. But we could put the LFO um, triangle and the square in there. And now the LFO triangle and the square will be blended, so on three we're going to get a mixture of those two waves. And that mixture can go out to VCO2 as well. So a mult's a way of taking a signal and spreading it across the board basically. Okay, over to this sort of dreaded, weird looking mixer. What we've got here, we've got these top two sliders and the top one, two, three, four inputs go out of this one inverter. And then down here, we've got a second one, which is much simpler, which is two inputs and one output. And finally, we've got this lag and a look at that at the end. But that's almost separate to the voltage processor in a way. So the first thing it does, it does a simple inversion of a signal, and we can show that by taking a sawtooth and turning it into a ramp. So let's put oscillator two on low frequency, and we'll use it to modulate the VCF. You can hear that's rising. Let's use this one down here, it's the simplest. That should now fall. And that's the same if we use any of these inputs. And just to prove that's a perfect inversion, if we bring it back out, put it into the mult, have one going direct from the mult, so this signal here should be the sawtooth, and we'll take one out of the mult, into an inverter, so this one should be an inverted signal. If we've got equal amounts of both, we should have no modulation whatsoever. There we go. It's going up. And this one's going down. So 
So as I say, this one here is a blend of inputs one, three, two, and four. So if I bring the LFO triangle and the square, We'll get what we got with the mult, but it'll be an inverted signal. And basically, we're going to be using a blend of the sawtooth and the square to modulate the filter. But we've also got these inputs on the left, and these combine with the signals on the right to make things much more complex. And this works actually as a mixer for audio and for voltages. But let's stick with the voltages for now. And these here, one, two, three, four, these are normalized or internally patched. Minus 10 volts, the keyboard CV, plus 10 volts, and the envelope follower on the lag processor. And what does all that mean? Well, basically, it means that this slider can be used without plugging anything in. This slider can be used to increase the signal. This slider is used to decrease the signal. And this slider is used to uh, modulate things according to where you are on the keyboard. But because it's an inverted signal coming out of here, the higher you play, the lower the voltage. So it's different than using this CV here, which is the higher the key, the higher the voltage. So just a self-oscillating filter with nothing coming into anything here. Modulate that simply by using this slider here. And what we'll do is we'll increase the voltage coming out of the inverter. And with this one, we'll decrease the voltage. So whatever your inputs are on one, three, and five are increased or decreased using these sliders. And I'm not increasing the amount of modulation, just the voltages within that modulation. And I'll explain what that means now. So LFO, triangle, put that into there. So if this voltage is, for example, between two and four volts, and put it through this, add voltage there, then it'll change it from between two and four to three and five, or four and six or seven and nine. So it'll increase the filter frequency while still keeping the modulation the same magnitude, so. And that's the same as doing this. But when you're in the middle of a performance, you might not want to move the, um, the VCF slider because you might want to come back to a particular point. So if you started your performance and you're here exactly, and you want to get back there, if you use this, you will always come back to exactly the same point. Obviously, I'm overplaying it here using that sort of crazy modulation, but get the idea, hopefully. And with this one, we'll decrease it by just as much. So here we go. This is the same as doing this. So that's what the sort of normalized things do, the minus 10 volts and the plus 10 volts. So moving over to the keyboard then, let's listen to just the filter self oscillating again. We'll take the LFO out for now. Now turning the amount of keyboard CV up, we'll reduce the filter frequency as we go up the keyboard. Whereas if we had it, let's go through this one here, 
normalized, not inverted, inverted. Now because we can slide that means we can use micro tuning so there's not a tone or a semitone between each of them, we'll just go in a few cents. But that's obviously inverted. So to invert that again, we could put it into five. So invert the inverted signal. Whoops, <laughs> myself confused there. So the output of the first inverter going into the input of the second. And now we're micro-tuning positively as we go up the keyboard. But we can use that to tune the oscillator. Let's turn the resonance down. Let's plug this into the keyboard CV. Bring in oscillator three. We've got micro tuning. It's about there, we'd probably get about one octave for every two octaves. There we go. <laughs> Almost. But you get the idea. So now let's take a look at it as almost like a CV mixer. We can override these inputs here. So let's put the, let's try it with the LFO again. So we have the LFO triangle and the LFO square. And we'll use that to modulate. What should we modulate with that? The pitch of VCO3. Okay, no modulation because these are both down. Let's add the triangle. Square. And now we'll literally just blend in between them. But you can't mix one and three in the same way. If I bring the LFO triangle into one, for example, I will always get it coming through at full modulation. I can't turn it down. If I try and turn it down, or if I try and turn it up, I suppose, I'm just changing the actual CV coming out of it. I'm not changing the amount of LFO. Again here, sort of what I showed earlier, but I'm not changing the amount of the LFO, as in the magnitude of the variation. I'm changing the central value. And as I said, these can work as audio mixers as well. So let's bring in, say, oscillator two. Let's bring in a pulse and the saw. So this is gonna blend between the pulse and the saw and if we give a bit of PWM on the pulse width so we can sort of hear it doing something. Bring these out here into the VCF. Oh, let's bring it into audio rate. So that's the pulse. And that's the saw. So you can blend them there and then you've got that blend that you can mix with a single slider up there. Just to demonstrate really it works with audio signals as well as CVs. So I think that just about covers the voltage processor up to this one at least. Uh, this one's really simple, it's a lag processor. So it's almost like portamento between CVs, um, essentially. So let's use, I don't know, let's use the square. It's pretty obvious on a square, isn't it? Bring that in. And then the lag processor out to, let's do it to the pitch of VCO3. As I increase the lag, it'll smooth those sort of hard edges on the square. Now 
Now, I don't know if that's a triangle or is that a sign. And I'm going to go to the sample and hold in a minute, but just to show it with the sample and hold. So the sample and hold out, put that in. There you go. And it's normalized or internally patched to the envelope follower so what I showed earlier with the guitar or with the drum machine you can follow your envelope and lag that slightly so just to smooth out the the input signal so I hope that um, is useful to somebody wondering what the voltage processor does I think that's quite comprehensive look at it and if it was think about subscribing as I say and taking a look at my patreon page we've got lots more stuff like that